Hey everybody, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. We're back here tonight for some more interviews um, to support the uh, Oracle Groundbreakers India Yatra, which is a big conference online that's taking place today. It's just actually started a couple days ago. And I'm here with Jim Suprinsky. Jim is one of the speakers. Uh, Jim, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jim. Glad to have, glad to be here with you. And uh, I know it's already tomorrow in where you are. So that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, it's 11 a.m. I'm sorry, it's 11 p.m. here. So <laughs> after we're finished, it'll be almost tomorrow uh, oh you know, for you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a, uh, it's how we do things. It's a global yes. world, right? Yes, um, it is. It's amazing. So I, I've been, I've been actually interested in meeting you. I've been following you online. Um, you know, looking at some of your stuff that you do. I'm, you know, you go to a lot of conferences and stuff, and I've seen you interviewed by some of my colleagues. Um, and I'm specifically trying to reach out at this conference to make some new friends and, you know, actually meet some some new people. So I'm very happy you responded. And um, so I want to get just a little bit of a sense from you now that the conference is up and running. Um, have you attended any of the sessions? What's it like? Do you have any feeling on how it's going? Well, it's amazingly professionally run. I'm, I've been to a lot of conferences and virtually in the last uh, several weeks because, well, that's basically all we can do right now with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and this one is really professionally run. I mean, everything is uh, right on time. I, I attended, uh, I believe it was yesterday, my colleague Rich Nemec, also from Chicago, by the way. Right. Um, um, we joke back and forth about which side of the city we're from, you know, and things like that where we grew up. But uh, Rich had a great presentation on 19C and some of the features of 20C uh, and where he sees technology going. Um, I think he's... Uh, Kind of like if, if we were science fiction writers, I'd be more like Arthur C. Clarke. I'm near, you know, here's what it really is bringing for us. But Rich really stretches that edge of the envelope out into things like robotics and machine learning and analytics, really looking deeply uh, into the future. So he had a great presentation and it was super professionally done. Yeah, Rich, he definitely is very good, you know, looking ahead as, you know, really, really interesting perspective on the community as well. Right. So, um, okay, so what are you talking about? You're talking about indexing. What is auto-indexing? Wow. Oh, well, uh, let's see. At the 30,000-foot view, uh, really, automatic indexing is all about um, leveraging some of the features that are available in autonomous database, specifically autonomous transaction processing. And the idea is, especially in an OLTP or hybrid system, we end up with a lot of times DBAs trying to tweak performance, especially for things like reporting, right? I, I like to say that I've never worked on an OLTP system. It's always a hybrid system because somebody goes, I need that data before it gets to the data warehouse. So a lot of times DBAs struggle with trying to find just the right secondary indexes to get reporting to perform adequately. The neat thing about automatic indexing is it actually uses machine learning and reinfor a reinforcement process to look at what SQL statements are actually doing inside the database, then and only then creating indexes that might be helpful to a particular workload. And then only after additional experience, experimentation, if you will, does it actually instantiate the indexes. So that's why I say it's one less thing for DBAs to worry about, but it's more along the lines, Jim, of, you know, the autonomous database is really changing the way DBAs are starting to think about their practice. The databases are getting so gosh darn smart that a lot of the helicopter DBA activity, as I like to call it, you know, hovering over a database and making sure that it's working just fine is simply not necessary anymore. And that's changing the DBA role dramatically as we uh, see things going forward. Actually, you bring up a really good point here. Um, some of the, you know, I've been going to India the, you know, a lot actually the last few years. Um, that's why I'm so disappointed that we couldn't go this year. 
Uh, but one of the things I've noticed in the community there, and I specifically asked this question, because uh, it, 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 it was primarily in the older times a DBA community, but that's changing now. And I've, right. I've noticed it change, and so I started asking the question, what was it like two, three, four, five years ago, six years ago? And mm -hmm. particularly as it's a lot more younger people that are coming in and the technology is changing like you mentioned the systems are simply getting smarter and and more of these um, functions are 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 now in simply in software now um right. and so um i asked the question they say well you know it's it's a mix now it's it's there's certainly a lot of dbas but now there's a lot of developers and the people who are coming in have new skills. They have more development mm -hmm. skills. So um, you've obviously noticed this as well. So can you give me a little bit of uh, your? Uh, can you give me a little bit of your view on that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think I was at the uh, Polish Oracle Users Group uh, in. I don't forget. I think we were in Br Brzeszlow uh, about a year and a half ago, and I. Uh, was doing a talk, I, I think it was actually about automatic indexing of an earlier version of this. Um, and I said, all right, who's here at DBA? R raise your hands, and who's a developer? And the developers raised their hands, and I, and I told the DBAs, wrong, you're all developers now. And I got a couple of looks like that, you know. But the truth of it is, um, you know, I, I've got four or five presentations that I, I focus on a year that I usually give. And right now, I've been a core DBA for 20 years. Half of my presentations now, Jim, are on either machine learning and analytics or Apex. Because, Apex. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I've got an interesting one coming up in a few weeks. I think I call it um, Politics Ain't Beanbag. And it's really about building an application for an election campaign, right? And the stresses of what you need to do, pull together extremely quickly. And really, the database for that application, for that Apex application that I'm demonstrating features of, I don't even think about the database. I haven't literally looked at the database in six months. It's wow. just been up. And so that's number one. The data, like you said, the databases are getting so smart that we don't need to waste time on that. But that frees up DBAs to think differently. Uh, from that perspective of machine learning and analytics, right? Uh, part of my presentations that I've been doing this year are on, here's how easy it is to do machine learning inside Oracle um, Autonomous Database, for example. There's OML. If you have a little more cash, you can buy an OAC instance, if you're a citizen uh, scientist, if you will. The idea here is we're shifting more towards a digitally driven or a data decision making, driven, data driven decision making um, environment. And we can't just be these helicopter DBAs anymore. We've really got to start thinking about our customers. And like I say, that's our development team, right? The, the people that we, we need to stop being the uh, doorstops in getting development done. And that's changed inside of, no kidding, three to five years, maybe only in the last three years. Yeah. I, it, it definitely has been a recent change, and it's actually visceral because you know, people – people do react you know just like you're reacting actually right now right. um now i think that's that's probably easier for younger people who are coming up through school you know uh, huh. who are getting yeah. into the business um they might have more diverse skills they might have certainly newer skills because they're hmm. you know because they're you know fresh out of school but what about the people the dbas that are already existing um who've, who have been in the business for a while because you know, being a DBA, being a developer, I mean, it might be a slightly different, actually, you correct me if I'm wrong, slightly different way of looking at technology. Um, is it? Um, I, I would say that, uh, you know, that's an interesting point, uh, because I'm coming off on, like, my eighth career in IT. Uh, I'm, I'm moving, I'm not even sure what I'm going to be when I grow up. And seriously, I've I'm, I'm done IT now for 40 years and I'm finding new things to do all the time. Like we talked about machine learning and analytics, right? Uh, from my experience, uh, the best way for DBAs to kind of make that transition, you know, as Captain Kirk said 
in one of the Star Trek movies. Um, I won't say that I built my entire life philosophy around Star Trek, but it helps. Uh, <laughs> Captain Kirk says to a young ensign, we learn by doing. Right. But he also says, uh, you have to understand why a starship works the way it does. And, you know, if you substitute the word database for starship, you know, these things are pretty sophisticated. An exadata database machine is pretty much getting into starship enterprise level of the technology. So my advice to folks, especially if they're a little older, if you will, I'm 63 this year, you know, is do. Go out there, experiment with the technology. You know, the new always free layer enables us to poke around in 70 to 80 percent of the technology of autonomous database without having to spend literally a dime of our own money right wow. uh, that's uh, that's another major change jim is that it used to be a lot harder to get experience with oracle technology and now it's go on a, what are you talking about always free you've got an apex environment there you've got an oml environment there have at it does that make sense, I guess? Yes, it does. It does. Um, now, oh, I'm getting a notification that my battery is running low. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, so it, it sounds like um, I mean, the tools have changed so much. And, um, but you know, my question is, does that change how you, I mean, since the tools have changed so much and the costs have gone to zero, as you mentioned, you know, with the cloud, um, does it change how you think about technology? My point I want to get at is this, th y y you can be seeing this as a way to liberate somebody. Mm. I mean, if, if they're stuck in an old field, right? Um, right. And they're, the thinking could be very old as well, right? Um, Correct. You have new tools, you have lower costs. That should, in theory, liberate your creativity so as more of a development function you could engage with the technology in a different way and create new things that's to me an opportunity it's an incredible opportunity and, and like i said about autonomous database right um, it's funny because it seems like when i do a presentation on autonomous database uh at conferences back when we did it in front of live people it seems like dbas uh, the old school DBAs, you know, people have been doing this, you know, since 8i and all that kind of stuff, uh, seem to shy away from it, but yet they run into a presentation about machine learning without realizing that machine learning and AI are really at the heart of what's going on inside an autonomous database. And it's right. like, no, dude, dude, you can come here. You know, this is where you're, what's going to affect you first. So number one, you know, change the way you're thinking about this stuff. Number two, it's liberating, like you said, to not have to worry about, is my database okay, right? Um, within certain parameters and, you know, again, just because, you know, just because the database is autonomous doesn't absolve you from the responsibility of understanding how it works. Right. But still, on the other hand, now you don't have to put much time into that. And, and then add to this, which is something interesting that, about 40% of DBAs today are managing, personally, managing 50 or more Oracle databases, right? So if you think about that, you ain't got time to be messing around being a helicopter DBA anymore. You've, you know, you, you've got to let the technology liberate yourself so that you can think about building, as I like to say, better systems, right? Mm -hmm. um, getting in front of the development efforts ahead of time and going, no, 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 no. This is 19C now, right? You can do this, 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 and this and help the development developers to write better systems, right? Which is really where we should have been as DBAs all along. We're really more data architects, right? Um, that's my perspective on that. Um, and one other thing too, as the um, machine learning and analytics and uh, data-driven decision-making comes to the fore, one of the things we are excellent at as da database administrators is knowing where the data is and how clean it is and what we might need to um, make that data cleaner. And if you talk to anybody that's a data scientist today, 90% of data scientists say, it's really all math. The big problem is you're not giving me enough clean data. Mm -hmm. And I spend more of my time going, this data is garbage, right? 
So mm -hmm. DBAs already know how to do that cleansing uh, or, or at least know how much cleansing needs to be done. So there's another opportunity. So I don't see the DBA role going away. I just see it being renamed and retasked and actually getting a heck of a lot more interesting and fun. You bring up an interesting you can actually bring up an interesting issue there about data science and the quality of the data uh, mm. with machine learning. And can, can you give me an example of bad data and may, maybe an example of good wow. data? What does it look like? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, I was actually working through, I mentioned uh, I've been doing some uh, research for a campaign, an election campaign I'm actually working on. And one of the columns that came in uh, was a mixture of ethnicity, essentially things like Caucasian dash middle or Caucasian dash medium or Hispanic dash high. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, is that, you know, I, I, I'm more Caucasian than someone else. And a, a perfect case of this was that, um, again, what it really had to do was more of a correlation of how much someone identified with that ethnicity, but someone had said, oh, no, that means uh, education level, high education versus medium. And then someone else from the same campaign said, no, 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 that has to do with income. And a data scientist at this point would be pulling out the rest of his or her hair going, which is it? Wow. And by the way, I'd like to get ranges of income, please, or ranges of education, especially with uh, in the USA, especially the, uh, the election that's coming up is going to hinge heavily on things like education, right? Uh, there's a lot of talk about that. So just using that as an example, whatever your political persuasions are, that's a perfect case for, wow, this is bad data. This is just not clean enough. It's not precise enough might be a better word. Right. right. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, Absolutely. Because uh, I hear this term a lot now with data science. I hear it a lot. You know, the quality of the data is, right. is right. You know, very, very important. Um, okay, so interesting subjects. Let's move on to uh, the ACE program. You've been, actually, you're an ACE director. Um, how long have you been an ACE director? I became an ACE director, and I think it was late March of 2014. So I guess I'm heading into my seventh year as an ACE director. Um, it's been an amazing experience and really? an, it's an amazing program. The entire ACE program all the way down to ACE associate. And, you know, now we're sort of wrapped up into the groundbreakers, uh, and Java champions program as well. There's again, like we said, nobody's a DBA anymore, right? <laughs> um, everybody's a developer in some case. So there's more overlap than there used to be. Um, but the people that uh, are in the program, the thing that's really neat about it is since we're not Oracle employees, we get to get the advantage of saying, you know what, this product really isn't ready for prime time. Um, it really could use X, Y, or Z. And we get to help influence uh, sort of indirectly, but taking from our own personal experience and our customers' experience, on what needs to improve. Right. Uh, so that's a unique opportunity um, and just the opportunity to meet other people that are better at speaking than I am, better that are better at writing or communicating than I am. Um, and, and also other folks that want to be uplifted, if, if it makes sense. I've helped several ACEs and ACE associates move up into the next level of experience and expertise in the program and mentoring is another excellent aspect of the program it, it teaches uh, those of us that maybe uh, when i got started i didn't really know anything about mentoring to be honest and i've become in my opinion a much better mentor and and colleague by concentrating on helping others um, and, you know, that's kind of Star Trek-ish if you think about it, right? I mean, there's this beautiful idea of we're all in this together on the bridge of the, of, of the NCC 1701 for my old Star Trek fans. Um, but, you know, that, that we're all in this together and the diversity of, of ethnicity, of race, of uh, nationality, of uh, age uh, and expertise 
ranges across so many different fields. It's utterly amazing. So the program itself is amazing, not just for what we're able to give back to the community, because that's really the focus, right, Jim? But also what we're able to help within our ACE community, which is around 500 people. It does fluctuate from year to year. Uh, but it's really exciting to see people bloom, right? Uh, I've had colleagues that were like, oh, I don't think I could ever get to ACE from ACE Associate. And I'm like, no, you're already doing it. It's just filling out the paperwork and tracking what you're doing. You know, and it's, it's extremely um, enervating, exciting to be able to help people make themselves realize with just a little bit of help that, yes, they can be a leader, that they can be someone that can give back to the community. So, yeah, actually, actually how you ended that is exactly what I was going to get into now. I mean, you just have described it's, it's not simply interaction, interacting with the company, product managers and engineers and developers right. at the company. Um, you, it's a community of people that you interact with each other as well. Um, and I, I find that I find that very interesting because when I go to conferences, um, you know, and if I'm if I'm around a group of aces, they are teaching each other, they are learning from each other, they are talking together, and they are helping each other as much as they're interacting with any of the Oracle engineers or you know product people. So right. it's interesting you say that. Uh, it seems like uh, this is you value community. Very much so. Very much so. Um, I have to admit that before I got started in the program, I hadn't traveled quite as much to other areas of the world. I had some, you know, rather American opinions about how people saw things outside the world. Um, and uh, I have to admit that a little bit of that American exceptionalism, <laughs> it was easier, it's easier for me to talk to people inside and outside of technology going, we have problems and there are countries and cultures that have actually dealt with this quite well. Mm -hmm. So there's actually that aspect of growing as a better human, right? I, I think that's part of it too. And helping other people see things about themselves that they didn't realize uh, that they could be, for example, a good writer and uh, a, a, a better speaker, um, a, a good presenter or even a better presenter, uh, even a, a blogger, right? Uh, little things like we just did a, a, uh, had a great session with Connor McDonald from Oracle, who is just an amazing presenter. And it was a session on how to do better video presentations. Right. And there were some really great little things in there, like, uh, you know, uh, get a good camera, you know, make sure the dogs aren't barking when you're trying to do your video presentation, common sense stuff, but just also things about, you know, if they're looking, if they're reading your slides, they aren't listening to you telling the story. Right. And just that aspect of learning how to transmit information, Right? I mean, that's really what information technology is all about. We're information engineers. We're taking information, transforming it, tweaking it, learning from it, finding hidden patterns inside it. And it's the new oil in a lot of ways. It's powering our economy. It's, yeah. it's an amazing it's an amazing career. I mean, short of being a starship captain, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do, frankly. Well, I, I tell you, I'm just going to interrupt here a little bit. It's really great to meet a, a fellow Trekkie. I, I was enthralled with Star <laughs> Trek when I watched it as a kid. And then Star Wars came out and I said, yeah, but we have Star Trek. <laughs> That's nice. But uh, it, it never moved me at all, um, especially the later movies. But yeah. virtually every Star Trek episode, you know, the old ones from the 60s, um, yes. just just extraordinary character development. I mean, and the thing is, yes. the technology was so hokey, but it was yeah. okay because the character development was just so, so strong. And the technology yes. they had, I mean, come on, right? Right. <laughs> you know, but, but you could talk to a computer, right? <laughs> Predated Siri, right? <laughs> <laughs> Working, you know, <laughs> Siri never says that. Working, it would be yeah, cool. It would be cool, yeah. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a plug-in for that. 
All right, Jim. Well, thank you very much for coming by. I appreciate it. I've learned a lot. I've made a new friend, so I feel successful tonight. Um, I will uh, hope to see you live at some point um, in the future when all is well in the world. And um, until then, enjoy the conference, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jim. It's been an honor to speak with you. I really appreciate it. Cool. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.